All right. So again, good morning to everybody. Welcome to our um, discussion on hematology 2. So last meeting on our last video, we talk about your we talk about an overview on your hemostasis. Now, we're going to talk about your megakaryocytopoiesis. So your megakaryocytopoiesis will be a two-part uh, discussion for today. So a two-part discussion, and I divided it. Uh, we'll be first talking about platelet production, the megakaryocytopoiesis part, the production of your megakaryocyte and your, your platelet shedding. And uh, the second part of our discussion will be talking about your platelets alone. So your platelets alone, meaning to say we're going to talk about the ultrastructure and also the function of your platelet. Now, let's get started with our discussion. Uh, so, first and foremost, uh, let's talk about your megakaryocytopoiesis. Um, if some of you are wondering, sir, um, is there a difference if I call it megakaryocytopoiesis or megakaryopoiesis? There's none. I just wanted you guys to get familiar with the megakaryocytopoiesis because um, I guess you are much familiar with the megakaryopoiesis, but nonetheless, both of them are the same. Now, moving forward, megakaryocytopoiesis is actually the production and the development of megakaryocytes. Let me just reiterate that part first, okay? This isn't the production of platelets yet. This is the production of your megakaryocytes. I have to clarify that part because later on, uh, we'll be talking about your platelet shedding and platelet shedding is known to be your thrombocytopoiesis. This is now the, um, the actual uh, production of your platelets and they are now being shed into your bloodstream. Now, Again, your megakaryocytopoiesis happens, of course, none other than you're in your bone marrow. So similarly, just like your hematopoiesis, your megakaryocytopoiesis also happens within your bone marrow. So let's just have a quick review. So you're seeing a diagram of the hematopoietic stem cell, your pluripotent stem cell. So during your hematology one, Okay, you already talked about uh, leukocytopoiesis, your leukopoiesis, or your erythropoiesis. Now we're going to talk about in more detail uh, your megakaryocyto, your megakaryopoiesis. So last time during our orientation, one of the few questions I asked you guys is that from what progenitor cell did your megakaryocyte came from. So there are actually two lineage that we all know. The common myeloid progenitor, okay, let me just pull out my laser, your common myeloid progenitor and your common lymphoid progenitor. So between the two, okay, your common lymphoid progenitor only give rise to three types of cell, your T cell, your B cell, and your natural killer cells, which are to be discussed in, your, in our immunology serology discussion. Now, let's focus our attention to the me common myeloid progenitor. Your common myeloid progenitor give rise to almost, uh, not to almost, it will give rise, yeah, it will give rise to all of your granulocytes together with your monocytes and the, or your macrophage. It will also give rise to your erythrocytes and most importantly, will give rise now to your megakaryocyte that will also produce now your platelet. Now let's focus our attention to your let's focus our attention to your megakaryocyte erythrocyte progenitor. Remember that um, your common myeloid progenitor is being influ is being influenced by a lot of your interleukin, okay, interleukin, and so in this particular part, okay, in this particular part. Um, when it comes to your 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 common myeloid progenitor, it will commit itself. Okay, it will commit itself to become a megakaryocyte erythrocyte progenitor. Remember that your CFUGMM will influence your common myeloid progenitor. Your common myeloid progenitor. Now that it will now start to differ to differentiate and to commit. Excuse me, one moment, please.
Okay. Now, moving back. Um, so, your megakaryocyte, your megakaryocyte erythrocyte progenitor will now commit itself to either produce your platelets or to produce your erythrocytes. So, depending on the hormone that will be produced, so if it is an EPO, your erythropoietin, it will be committing to become, it will be influenced and it will com eventually commit to produce erythrocyte. If your thrombopoietin is the one that is produced, then it will be influenced, therefore will commit to produce your platelet. Remember that your hematopoietic stem cell, ladies and gentlemen, can make copies of themselves to maintain the stem cell pool and, and they do possess the ability to generate cells of all lineage. That's why we call it pluripotential. Okay? So this stem cell give rise to multipotent myeloid and lymphoid progenitor cells. We say multipotent because they can become a a uh, granulocyte, a monocyte, a basophil, uh, a eosinophil, megakaryocyte, erythrocyte. Even your lymphoid progenitor is also multi, uh, is also considered to be a multipotent. Why? Because it can become your T cell, your B cell, or your NK cell. So ultimately, okay, ultimately, the, uh, the, the progenitor cells, okay, are restricted only to specific lineage. So that's why I have to clarify and reiterate to you the difference between the common lymphoid and the common myeloid progenitor. So with appropriate cytokine stimulus, uh, appropriate hormone um, stimulus, the committed progenitor cell will undergo proliferation to a recognizable precursor of that specific cell they committed to become. Okay? So similarly in our life, diba, if you want to become um, a medical technologist in the future, you commit yourself with all the, the stimulus, diba, academic and also extracurricular stimulus that will help you okay, proliferate, that will help you differentiate to a recognizable med tech in the future. Similarly to your megakaryocyte, that's also what happened. They will um they will also differentiate and mature, and therefore become a mature end stage cell. So this stem cell and progenitor cell, okay, always remember cannot be morphologically, uh, cannot be morphologically differentiated. What I'm trying to say is that lahat sila magkapa mukha. Let's say it in English, all of your progenitor cell, including your hematopoietic stem cell, all of the all of them looks the same. They are morphologi uh, they are morphologically indistinguishable. Okay? So all of them look like um the same cell. Okay? So how do we uh differentiate them? Later on we'll be talking about that shortly. Okay? So since we cannot classify them, okay, since we cannot classify them by their appearances, by their morphologic appearance, uh, what we use now are your CD. Ayan, I, all, I mentioned it immediately. Your CD or your cluster of differentiation. So your cluster of differentiations, uh, these are protein markers, okay, specific to a, a specific type of cell. Okay? So take for example, you have uh, a identical uh triplets so these are three individuals all look the same but there are uh there are distinguishing marks that will enable you to identify who is this person okay if this is a b or c so similarly with the use of your cluster of differentiation or your cd proteins we're also able to classify them okay that is only through cd or cluster of differentiation never through uh, morphological or microscopic differentiation. Okay? So, let us now narrow down our discussion to your megakaryocyte. Okay? Remember that your, your megakaryocytopoiesis happen in your bone marrow and most of your megakaryocyte, the differentiating and your mature megakaryocyte usually are localized in the abluminal or the non-blood surface of the sinusoid lining um, endothelial cells. So as you can see, they are not within the the they are not within the 
the blood surface. So they are just near, okay? They are just near or they are localized. They are residing on the lining of your endothelial cell. This is in preparation for the for their movement into the bloodstream. Okay? They just reside near, okay? So that um, at any given time, once that they are ready to uh, shed the platelets, they can already deliver it directly to the blood, okay? Directly to your blood. So, since we're already talking about your megakaryocytopoiesis, let's talk about now, okay, the progenitor cells of your megakaryocyte. So, when we say progenitor cell of your megakaryocyte, again, uh, similarly to your hematopoietic stem cell, they are indistinguishable. So, there are three stages of megakaryocyte progenitor, okay? So, from your megakaryocyte erythrocyte progenitor, Okay, your uh remember it will become now your 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 CFUG MM. Okay, um uh, will give rise to your megakaryocyte erythrocyte progenitor. So once that there are cytokines like your megakaryocyte colony stimulating factor or your meg CSF together with your interleukin three. Now with also the influence of your thrombopoietin. Your CFU GEMM, okay, your CFU GEMM will now be uh, differentiating into becoming your burst forming unit megakaryocyte or your BFU megakaryocyte, okay? Your BFU megakaryocyte, okay, your BFU megakaryocyte uh, is capable of um, producing or proliferating into, into forming hundreds of BFU. That's why you call it BFU, okay, because these are burst-forming uh, burst forming units. So they can um, undergo mitosis, okay? So eventually, this burst-forming unit, okay, this burst-forming unit will eventually become now your colony-forming unit megakaryocyte. Your, col your colony-forming megakaryocyte, your CFU, okay, will now form, okay, um a differentiated and a more mature um megakaryocyte remember that in your bfu meg and your cfu meg okay burst forming unit megakaryocyte and colony forming megakaryocyte both of them are still capable of the normal mitosis i say normal mitosis because once that your cfu and your bfu meg become now your ld CFU megakaryocyte uh, or your your um your light density okay your light density colony forming unit megakaryocyte it is no longer capable of the normal mitosis it is only capable of endomitosis now before i explain to you guys what is um endomitosis remember that your bfu meg cfu meg okay and your ld ld cfu meg all of them okay all of them looks the same okay all of them looks the same they cannot be differentiated from one or the other all of them looks the same you guys might look uh, at it as something that para smaller but your bfu meg these are actually all bfu megs okay these are these are all bfu megs these are all cfu meg um we are just trying to give you an idea how much um how much mitotic activity do they have so your bfu meg can form hundreds okay hundred of bfus or BFU meg, and then it will differentiate to become your CFU meg, and then it will become your LD CFU meg. Okay, so again, between uh, among the three, um, LD CFU meg is the one not capable of normal mitosis. Okay, not normal, not capable of normal mitosis. What is it capable of? Okay, it is capable of what. it is capable of endomitosis. So what is endomitosis? So let me explain what endomitosis is. So endomitosis is a form of mitosis that lacks your telophase and your cytokinesis. So as you all know, um, your mitosis has four, as 
four um, important phases, your prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Yeah, sige, let's include interphase. Okay, so these those are the five phases uh, or the, the, the phases of your mitosis. Now, when it comes to endomitosis, it is not uh, similar to the usual one that our cells underwent uh, every now and then because your endomitosis lacks your telophase. So there is no um, cytokinesis, there is no cell separation, there is no production of two, uh, there is no production of <coughs> two daughter cells. Okay, instead, what happened is that your megakaryocyte just continually, your megakaryocyte just continually, uh, just continue to grow. Okay, your megakaryocyte will just continue to grow. Okay, uh, your megakaryocyte will employ their multiple DNA copies. The DNA will uh, continually, uh, continually replicate, and the nucleus will continually, um. Uh, enlarged but at the same time okay it will also synthesize abundant cytoplasm okay magpo-produce yan ng abundant cytoplasm because ultimately that is where um your platelet will come from okay so in a more technical aspect okay in a more technical aspect remember that you have your gata1 okay or your it stands for your globin transcription factor 1 and your FOG uh, gene, okay, your FOG gene, which is a friend of GATA, okay, a friend of GATA1, okay, that's why it is FOG1. So what happened is that what uh, these two are the one that um, facilitates or ensure your mitosis, okay? But once that um, it enters your LDCFU peg, your GATA1 and your FOG1 will now start to slow down being expressed in your uh, it will now start to slow down being expressed in your cell. Once that um, nawala or these two are no longer expressed, the one that will be expressed now, okay, the one that will control the mitosis inside your megakaryocyte or your RNX1, okay, your RUNX1 or your RUNX1 gene, okay, this is a gene that will now initiate your endomitosis. So once that your RUNX1 is the one responsible for the mitosis, it will become now your endomitosis. Endomitosis in a sense that there will no longer be cell division. Okay, there, there is technically a cell division. I hope you get me guys now. But there is no longer a telophase and a cytokinesis part in the cell division that's happening. And that is what we call your endo. Mitosis. Where do we see endomitosis? We see that in your LDCFU meg of the three megakaryocyte progenitor. Okay, three megakaryocyte progenitor. So this to again reiterate to everybody, the stages are your BFU meg, your CFU meg, and your LDCFU meg. So your BFU meg is the least mature one. Okay, of the three progenitor, meaning to say ito yung pinaka-bata, okay, least differentiated, followed by your colony-forming unit megakaryocyte, which has a, uh, this time, <coughs> since this is still normal mitosis, it's still diploid, okay, it has, it's, it produces diploid, um, it participates still in your normal mitosis until we go to your LDCFU meg, okay, which is more, which is the one more mature of them all, okay? Uh, with, uh, among the three, your LDCFU meg is the, uh, it is the most mature, okay? It is the more most ma mature. And aside from that, your LDCFU meg, aside from not, aside being the most mature, um, the most mature uh, progenitor of your megakaryocyte, it also loses its capacity to divide. Again, that is your endomitosis. Okay? That is your endomitosis. It lacks your telophase and your cytokinesis. So there is no separation now of your daughter cell. So um, all of these three, again, resembles like a small lymphocyte in your bone marrow. If you prepare a bone marrow, uh, a bone marrow smear. So remember that, ha? 
that all of these three that we're discussing cannot be differentiated morphologically. That's why we're saying that these are morphologically indistinguishable from one another. Now, the question is, sir, how do we identify them now? Okay? How do we identify them now? So, the way to identify them is through okay, immunologic tests or cytochemical stain. I guess you guys are familiar with cytochemical stain from your histopathology last semester and also hematology one, specifically when you talk about your white blood cells. Okay? When you did talk about your white blood cells. So, there are um, immunological tests um, that uses your flow cytometry that will allow us to identify uh, what specific um, cell are we dealing? So there are different markers that we can use. So you can use your MPL. Okay, you can use your MPL, your CD34, CD41, CD42, your uh, PF4, your platelet factor 4, your von Willebrand factor, and your fibrinogen. So as you can see, okay, as you can see, guys, okay, so... Um, the bar that you can see, meaning to say um, the marker is present in that particular specific, ano, the marker is present on that specific type of cell. So now I want you guys just to focus first on your BFU meg until your LDCFU meg because this is, um, they are indistinguishable morph uh, morphologically. So like for example, you look at the microscope, you will not know if this is BFU Meg, CFU Meg, or LDFU Meg unless, okay, unless you look at the microscope, okay, unless you look at the microscope. Now, how are we going to differentiate BFU Meg? Okay, BFU Meg can be differentiated because it does have all of them. Okay, so let me just try to erase the um the writings that I did. Okay, so here, how do we differentiate your BFU Meg from all the others? Remember that when you use MPL, all of them does have MPL. So check, okay? They do have MPL, meaning to say we cannot use MPL to differentiate them because they all have the same. Now, when we talk about CD4, that's also problematic because all of them does contain CD34. Uh, so we cannot differentiate that. Uh, we cannot differentiate the three using that. Now, we can differentiate your BFU meg um, from your CFU meg and your LDCFU meg using your CD34. Why? Because your BFU meg do not contain your CD41. Okay? Your CD41. So, if the cell contains MPL, CD34, but does not have your CD41, that means that it is a BFU megakaryocyte. Now, let's go to another story. How about CFU Meg and um, LDCFU Meg? Sir, if we're going to do immunologic uh, tests, okay, if we're going to do immunologic tests, they're almost the same. Okay, They're almost the same. How will I be able to differentiate one from the other? The, the, uh, to answer your question, the, the ultimate um, differentiating factor between your CFU Meg and your LDFU Meg is to identify if there is endomitosis or not. If there is no endomitosis, walang endomitosis, then that is probably your CFU cryocarnicide. But if it has, okay, if it has your endomitosis going on, then that will give you an idea now that what you're looking at, what you're seeing, or what you are counting are your LDCFU megakaryocyte. So again, please remember how to differentiate them. Uh. Your BFU meg can be differentiated using your CD41. Between the two, CFU meg and LDCFU meg, how to differentiate them by identifying which one has your endomitosis. Okay? Which one has your endomitosis? So please, again, remember that. Okay? And do not forget that in our succeeding discussion. Now, okay, we are finished talking about the non-identifiable uh, uh, stages of megakaryocyte progenitor, which are your um, which are your BFU meg, your CFU meg, and your LDCFU meg. Uh, so do not forget that. Do not forget this three. So these are the first 
three progenitors of your megakaryocyte. After that, comes now your morphologically identifiable. When we say morphologically identify, we can now identify them under the microscope. Okay? So we have your MK1, your MK2, and your MK3. Your MK1, also known as your megakaryoblast. Your MK2, your pro-megakaryocyte. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so yeah, again, we have your MK1, your megakaryoblast, and then your MK2, your pro-megakaryocyte, okay, your pro-megakaryocyte, and now, finally, okay, we also have your last, <clears throat> that is your megakaryocyte, which is the mature one now, okay? So, to further give you um, the, their um, identity viable or their distinguishable characteristic. So let's go on. Your MK1 or your megakaryoblast, um, they contain your, uh, they, you can see um, plasma blebs, bl blunt projections. Okay, sorry for the typographical error. So they have plasma blebs, blunt projectors. Okay, so their plasma blebs, or these are blunt projections from the margin that resembles your platelet. Okay. At the same time, you can already see your demarcation system. So these are this is very important. Your demarcation system, these are like um, lines. Okay, if this is your cell, okay, these are already um, lines, okay, or cutouts. It looks like cutouts within the cytoplasm, and that will now um, be shed off as a mature platelet. Okay. A mature platelet. So there, uh, you have um, cutouts. Or, eh, these are demarcation line. Jan matatanggal. Okay, kapag nag nag shed off yan, that is now an entire platelet. Okay. So aside from that, we also have your MK2 or your pro megakaryocyte. So they have lobulate nucleus. So aside from they do have lobulate um. Nucleus, you start to see lobulation on their nucleus already. Okay. And lastly, okay, lastly, we have your um, MK3 or your megakaryocyte. Um, intensely, they, they are observable by having your intensely lobulated nucleus already. So between the two, you can um, differentiate pro megakaryocyte from megakaryocyte depending on the lobulation in their nucleus. Aside from that, um, if you're reading your RODA, the latest edition, um, you can also differentiate them and you can specifically identify your megakaryocyte by identifying the ploidy level, okay, the ploidy level using your propodium iodide, okay, using your propodium iodide. So, this is what we use, okay? This is what we use so that you'll be able to what? You'll be able to 
identify your um, platelets or rather your mega karyocyte. Now, okay, to um, give you a summary, okay, so remember, ayan, so this is a terminal megacaryocyte differentiation stage. So you, we can differentiate them according to their diameter. Uh, but most importantly, what I want you guys to remember when it comes to your, uh, to the difference, uh, to the <laughs> megacaryocyte um, differentiation stages, your MK1 to 3, when it comes to mitosis, all of that um, MK1 to MK3, it's already absent. When it comes to endomitosis, um, in your megacaryoblast, it's still present, okay? And it will end at your pro-megacaryocyte or your MK2, okay? And ab already absent in your MK3, okay? In your MK3. And lastly, ayan, your demarcation system is present in all of them. Similarly with your alpha granules, and also your dense granules. Much about your alpha dense granules in your demarcation system once we reach your um, ultra, the platelet ultra structure. Now, we're nearing the end of our discussion. So now that we already know, no, um, there are three progenitor cells of your megacar megacaryocyte, your BFU meg, CFU meg, LDCFU meg. Once they enter a different, uh, a distinguishable stages, we call now, we can now call them as your MK1, your megacaryoblast, your mega, pro megacaryocyte, and your megacaryocyte. Now, we will now talk about your megacaryocyte. So, this is now the end of your megacaryocyte topoesis. <laughs> your megacaryocyte is the largest cell in the bone marrow. So, we have uh, less than 0.5% of all, uh, we have less than 0.5% megacaryocyte of all bone marrow cells. So with multiple chromosome copies because of their polyploid, okay, because of their polyploid, they can reach up until 128 ploidy. <laughs> 128 ploidy. Again, because of endomitosis. So, we can identify them, okay? We can study them using your bone marrow aspirate and stain them using your right gym sustain. And when we measure it, it's around 30 to 50 micrometer. So their nucleus is multi-lobulated, intensely lobulated. Why? Because this is already your MK3, okay? Your mega karyocyte. So um, when you're looking under the microscope, um, you can see around 2 to 4 megacaryocyte per 10 times LPO, okay, per LPO field. So 2 to 4 megacaryocyte per LPO. So that's now the, uh, that's now how your megacaryocytes are produced. So from the, uh, from the um, hematopoietic stem cell, okay, from the hematopoietic stem cell, it becomes your CFU GMM. Um, influenced by your TPO, your megacaryocyte stimulating fact, uh, colony stimulating factor, and then your interleukin-3 becoming now your BFU meg, CFU meg, LDCFU meg, and then becoming now your megacaryoblast, pro-megacaryocyte, and then eventually your megacaryocyte, which we have now like this, okay? This is now your megacaryocyte, okay? This is now your mega Karyocyte. Now, once your megacaryocytes are mature enough, okay, sabi natin kanina, they will be residing on the endothelial lining of your bone marrow. They will now be ready for platelet shedding. Okay? Your platelet shedding, also known as the process of thrombocytopoiesis. Your thrombocytopoiesis or your platelet shedding, as you can see here on your picture, okay, this is your megacaryocyte. And this one, okay, a pro-platelet projection, okay, a pro-platelet projection, as you can see, they, they are now releasing, okay, they are now shedding, rather, they are now shedding your platelets. So one megacaryocyte, okay, one megacaryocyte can produce around 2,000 to 4,000 platelets. So maybe you're wondering how are they being released or how they are being shed? That is through your demarcation or your demarcation system, the one, the one that I'm talking about uh, 
moments ago. So, uh, your demarcation system are like cutouts in the cytoplasm that will be um, where your platelets shed or be released. So, they undergo fragment, the cytoplasm of your megacaryocyte undergo fragmentation where your platelets are now being released. Now, the platelets are formed at the end of your proplatelets and are released by microtubular action. Okay, I'll show, I think I have a picture later. I think I was able to delete the picture here. Here na lang. This one, okay, this is your proplatelet. This is an extension, okay? It's like an extension of the cytoplasm where your platelets are being shed. Excuse me. Ayan. Where your platelets are being shed off. Okay? Where your platelets are being shed off. So your thrombocytopoiesis leaves behind a naked megacaryocyte nuclei to be consumed by your bone marrow macrophage. Okay? To be consumed by your bone marrow macrophage. So remember, okay, like what I was mentioning kanina, okay, like what I was mentioning kanina, your megacardiocyte, even though they do not divide, okay, even if they do not physically divide, they grow their platelet, they grow their cytoplasm because that is where your platelet would come from. Now, the, the cytoplasm will completely be fragmented and all will become platelet. Around 2,000 to 4,000 platelet will be produced, leaving us now a nucleus, a nuclei that is exposed and will now be consumed and engulfed by your macrophages. Okay? Your macrophages. Now remember, ha, the proplatelet, the one that I showed you kanina, that is a pseudopodial extension. Okay? A pseudopodial extension of your megacaryocyte where your platelets are being released. Okay? Now, we finish your megacaryocyte. We finish. They already undergo thrombocytopoiesis or platelet shedding. Now, for the last part of the discussion, let's talk about your platelets or commonly known as your thrombocytes. Now, your thrombocytes, these are enucleated cells. The only uh, and they are anucleated cells, okay? They are anucleated cell, so they um they have they are around two point five micrometer. So when it comes to their mean platelet volume, that is around eight to ten femtoliter. So they are the normal um the normal range or the reference value for your platelet in um in a normal individual that is one hundred fifty to four hundred times ten to the ninth. Uh, 10 times 10 to the 9th power per liter. It's slightly lower um, at both sexes over 65 years old. And your platelets are technically higher in women. So 30% of your platelets or one third of your platelets are found in your spleen. They are deposited in your spleen. And two thirds of your platelets are circulating. So one third um, or 30% um, are stored in your spleen, that is your resting platelets, and two-thirds or 70% of your platelets are circulating platelets. Okay, they are circulating platelets. Again, the 30% that is your um that is your resting platelets, these are your um circulating platelets. So platelets per oil immersion field, okay, in your peripheral blood smear, a normal one, normal. Uh, when you look at it under the microscope, it would have around 7 to 21. Okay, 7 to 21 uh, platelets per oil immersion field. So um, your platelets are the one that could trigger your primary hemostasis. Okay, your primary hemostasis. Remember, um, your primary hemostatic plug is your platelet plug. Okay, now to um, end our discussion, let's just talk about um, a few things before we um, end this discussion, and that is about the different hormones and cytokines of your megacaryocytopoiesis. Okay? So, um, the first one are the one that in the most important 
hormone in your megacarocytopoiesis because they induce stem cell differentiation, they induce proliferation and platelet release, and these are your thrombopoietin. Your thrombopoietin, ladies and gentlemen, are found in your kidney, similarly with your erythropoietin, although they're also found in your liver and in your smooth muscle. Okay? So, kidney, liver, and smooth muscle. Majority are coming from your liver. Now, um, it circulates in your plasma. Your thrombopoietin circulates in your plasma. And for individuals that has problem producing thrombopoietin um, and would now lead to thrombocytopenia, there's a recombinant thrombopoietin that can be used so that as a therapy so that um, we can um, trigger or we can um, elicit a production of platelets in those patients. Okay? So aside from that, okay, um, aside from thrombopoietin, um, I also mentioned some cytokines a while back, and these are your interleukin-3 that is involved for the early differentiation of your stem cell. Remember your megacaryocytes, um, colony forming, um, colony uh, stimulating factor or your CF, um, meg CSF, okay, your meg CSF together with your interleukin-3 and your TPO, they allow the differentiation of your stem cell to become your BFU megacardiocyte. Aside from that, we also have your interleukin-6 and interleukin-11. They act in the presence of your thrombopoietin to enhance endomitosis. Remember what gene was responsible for endomitosis? That is your RUNX1. Okay? Your RUNX1. So, megacar endomitosis and then eventually megacaricide maturation and platelet release. Okay? And platelet release. So, finally, okay, finally, um, I already showed you this, anina, I already showed you this uh, picture a while back. This is how we different, uh, this are the uh, different hormones and cytokines that control your uh, megacaryocytopoiesis. So remember your TPO, interleukin 3, 6, and 11. So interleukin um, 3 and TPO is for the differentiation of your progenitors. BFU meg until LDCFU meg. For the differentiation of your megacaryocyte, we have TPO, uh, interleukin 3, and interleukin 11. For late maturation, your TPO, interleukin 6, and interleukin 11. For thrombocytopoiesis, okay, the platelet shedding, we only need your interleukin-6 and interleukin-11. Okay? So, with that, okay, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. So, I hope um, you have an, a, an idea now how your megacaryocytopoiesis is happening inside our body. Now, for the second part of our discussion on our next meeting we will be talking about the ultra structure of your platelets okay with that uh thank you so much for listening so if you have any questions or clarification please send me a message through tlc or through my email and i'll be happy to answer you as soon as i can so thank you so much for listening with that thank you so much you can now leave the platform and do not forget to read your book okay to read your book so that you'll be able to have an idea of the entire context of what we just discussed today. So again, thank you so much, and I'll see you on our next discussion. Goodbye.